Hey y'all, Jessie Peterson here with Let's Make Art and I'm going to do an art journaling tutorial called The Magic Wolf and it's about helping us dispel our inner critic. So let's get started. We are going to use this prompt to spell your inner critic and I think this is a really great thing to um, address because we all have those moments where we think we aren't a real artist or we're not good at this and we're wasting your time. If you have those kind of thoughts in your mind and you're having trouble moving forward, then this is a really great one to be thinking about. So we're gonna conjure up some courage to fight the negativity by arming our favorite kindred spirit animal with magical powers. Um, we can journal about our inner critic's opinions and give that critic a name. So that's what we're gonna do. So you can do the wolf but you can also choose another animal that you like to be the animal that's gonna dispel your inner critic. Um, right here, I have our paper that we are um, using for this. This is going to be a download that is smaller, mini PDF, so if you haven't got that, check your email or the group and you can get the link for that. Um, we also have this larger paper that came in your box um, that you can also use if you want to have the wolf fill more of the page, so up to you. So our first step is gonna be trimming out our wolf, but first I wanna go over the supplies that we have that we're gonna to use today. So we're gonna use our watercolor that comes in this, and we're going to use um, an X-Acto knife to cut out our collage paper, and we're gonna use our Yes Paste, and we are going to use this silver iridescent paint. So that's what we have here. Just wanna make sure I have that open, so it'll be easy to open. All right, here we go. And you can use um, an, a round eight brush if you like. And for these little details, you might enjoy using a round two or even a round one. And I will kind of use those interchangeably so you can see how it turns out. Okay, let's nice. get started. Got Keenan here on the cameras, ooh, ooh. helping me show you all the things in the best way that you can see it. So I'm getting my cutting board out here. And this is the wolf that we're gonna use for this one. But like I said, you can use whatever animal you want. So I'm gonna use my X-Acto. Now you could use scissors and not get into these little details as much as you want. I like fussy cutting, it's really up to you. Fussy cutting is something I remember hearing in the quilting world, but I think it can apply to paper too. I was gonna ask what fussy cutting was. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to just kind of cut into this a little bit and kind of give it a wave, because I think that'll look cool with this technique, but you can do whatever you want. I like to turn my paper to give me the best angle to cut. If you are struggling to get a clean cut, it might be time to change your blade. So always start with a nice sharp blade because that's gonna cut your paper really well. Turn this, keep this up here so you can see it. Now usually I'm right on top of this with my head in the way so that I can really see, but I'm trying to keep my head out of the way. So this might not cut exactly perfect, but it's gonna be okay. It's okay, nothing's perfect. Yeah, it's okay if it's not. I just love this little wolf, he's so cute. I do too, wolves are majestic. Now, is this the animal that you would choose for this project, Keenan? Do you identify with a wolf more? I can't decide. So I like, I feel like owls are wise. Mm -hmm. Wolves are aggressive. So I think I might use the owl to be like, hey, dude, you know what? Calm down. Don't be down on yourself like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's just Keenan. Oh, I'm like, where's my journal clips? They're on that other journal. <laughs> okay. So I like having this wolf there just as a guide for like size. We're not gonna paste them on yet, but we're just gonna use them as a reference. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And if you have trouble with this little journal not staying flat, you can kind of kind of bend it backwards a little bit. That might help it stay flat. Oh yeah, that works good. Okay, now you can grab a pencil and just sketch in this shape. So we got this little I don't know. I just thought it kind of looked smoky, whatever shape. It doesn't have to look like mine. You can do whatever you want. But I'm just gonna have this little bit of a magical shape coming in like this. I 
But I'm going to put my wolf back on there and say, okay, is that going to be big enough? Might need to make this come out a little bit more. So no exact science here, just sketching a shape we like. And I think some of this little bit of magic potiony, oceany wave. I don't know what you call that. That's technical. That's the technical term. Magic potiony wavy yeah, stuff. Oceany smoky. wavy. I couldn't decide if I wanted it to be like smoky or whatever. So I just kind of went with what my imagination. And you can do that too. Use your imagination, however you want to do it. Okay, that's our general shape for that side. For the wolf and since it's a double spread i'm going to go ahead and do the shape on this one i'm starting out where this one the magic potion is coming from the bottom and kind of billowing out into a cloud i, ha I sort of had the general shape here but i just thought i'd do it a little darker so you could see and you might want to do it lighter so it doesn't show through your watercolor but just for the camera i thought we're gonna have to do this a little more Okay, so I think that's enough for us to stay on track as far as the general shape goes. Yeah. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, and if you're already starting to be like, oh no, I don't, this isn't turning out. Just remember, we're dispelling our inner critic here. Just kicking that out of there. And our wolf or our magical animal of choice is gonna help us with that. Okay, so a trick I learned from Sarah. I'm going to start with this round eight brush. Well, let's get our watercolor on the tray first. Just going to put a little bit of that on there. Okay. So the first time I tried to do this, I just put straight black watercolor paper on my paper and it, it wasn't as black as I wanted it to be. And Sarah walked by and I said, what do I do? And Sarah said, put water on the paper first. So I did that and y'all it works. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put just water, no paint on this first. And then I'm gonna add the watercolor. Ooh, see? Ooh. So fun. Ooh, and it gives you some blooms. Yeah. Now this isn't like super duper watercolor paper that's in this journal. It's just like a little thicker sort of paper that kind of acts like watercolor. So we are yeah. getting a little bit. That's nice. It'll help with that mystic look. Yeah, mystic, ooh, I like that. Yeah, mystic magic. I use words. I like it. Ooh, look how that one just followed the line ooh, of the water. Ooh, that's can... fun. Oh, I like those happy little magic-y moments that happen when you're just Jesse, going for it. How do you feel about scooting that journal up just to like Right in there? Half square. How about that? That's even better. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, I started on the left page because I'm right-handed, so that when I move to this one, I wouldn't be on this. So if you're the other hand, then you Swap. might want to start on the opposite That's page. That's a good point. Good, good call. Or you can wait for it to dry if you're not like me where I'm just like, I want to just keep going. <laughs> So this one is all about layering. So I'm just gonna keep going back in and having darker and lighter spots and building that shape out. Get a little more water on my brush here. There we go. I got quiet because I just I'm really into this. <laughs> it's, the, it's the focus mode. It's very satisfying to watch each brush, brush stroke. Yeah. Now, I just put my hand in the paint, and then I'm worried I'm going to put it on the other side of the paper, so I'm just going to get my hand wet. If that happens to you. I mean, if you get paint on the other side, it's no big deal. But if you notice you got paint on your hand, you can get it off. Yeah. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to water my paint down just a titch. And I kind of like some of these, I don't know if you can see this on the other side, little 
parts that go outside of the shape a little bit. Oh, that's kind of dark. I'm glad I started right there. Maybe it's dark because it's still wet. Maybe. Let's see. There we go. And I'm not outlining it. I'm just kind of going in and out of that shape. Oh. So in. Kind of gives it life rather than have it be just a shape on a page. Gives it a little, gives it some arms. Yeah, I'm trying to think about all of those m movies that I've seen that have some magical, misty yeah. cloud of something and how it kind of has some movement. So we're trying to create that movement. This makes me think of Little Mermaid. Oh, yeah? Uh, what's that? The evil lady's name. Oh, Ursula. Ursula. <laughs> I didn't think about it. Yeah, because she's kind of she has some movement in her. Yeah, she's got the misting stuff going on. Yeah, there's all kinds of magical movies that kind of have this situation happening. So you want to have some parts that are pretty dark so that when we go in to add the iridescent, that it will show up. It will really pop on that dark part. So I'm going to focus on getting some darker spots. And I should have used a piece of paper behind this. I don't have anything else in this journal right now. But this sort of paper is not like our other journals. It might tend to bleed a little bit. So just if you're worried about that, you can put a page behind your journal. I meant to say that earlier. Pro tip. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm liking this. Just get a little bit of outline in this guy. We're almost there. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. And we can t check. So if we put our wolf right in there. I think I don't want this. I like the negative space, like where the ear is here, but maybe I want it to be all dark right there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Where was it? Yeah, right in there. Yeah, I like that. I can't get, stop fiddling around with this. You guys, this is fun. That means you're gonna have fun with it. Cause I just wanna keep painting. All right, so we'll let that dry. We'll move on to our other shape. If I move that right there, how's that? Looks wonderful. Okay. So I'm just gonna get my brush wet again, just water and fill in some of these spaces I know I want to be kind of dark first. And then we'll add in the ink. Sarah's a great watercolor teacher and she has so many fun tricks. So if you are looking to improve your watercolor skills, go check out her videos if you haven't seen them. I learn something new every time I do one of her tutorials. Oh yeah, this is good. Getting some blooms. Now I'm leaving some room at the bottom because I want to be able to, I just taped this in here so I can move it and show you. I want to leave some room for that guy. So let's put this back. I'm going to try working on some of these shapes. All that other watercolor is kind of settling into paper. That's the thing with watercolor. You just kind of let it do its own thing. It has a mind of its own. Mm-hmm. Helps with the creative process, I think, because you're like battling the watercolor. Like, wait a second. Yeah. You did this, but I wanted you to, I wanted you to do that. <laughs> I was trying to think of all the things that an inner critic could say that really 
is not true. It's like the story we tell ourselves, and when we are aware of it, and we can really identify what's going on there, then we can move on. I think it's it's uh, it's good. So I'm hoping that this type of project will help you recognize anything you got that's like like what are things, Keenan, that people could get bugged about inner critic wise in art. I mean, I think. Depending on the situation, people can be inner critic on everything. Mm -hmm. Even something as simple as cleaning your house, especially right now. Oh, gosh. You know? Just like, oh, but if I don't do this first, just go back and forth with yourself. I have an inner critic log daily on different things, you know? Mm -hmm. and, there, and just because your brain goes there doesn't mean it's true. So today, we're going to give that inner critic a name. I'm trying to think of what my inner critic name is going to be. What would you name your inner critic? I'm not sure. I don't know if I would have a, a name for it. Because it always takes a different form. You know, it's always pulling me or pushing me away from something that could make it make something else easier. Hmm. A name. I'll think on it. Okay. Well, maybe we don't have to focus on a name. Like, I mean, I was thinking we can write down a name, give it a name. So that's like separating yourself from this thing. That's probably not true. Um, but you could just write some of the things that you're critical about that you want to be mindful of. That's true. So we don't have to limit it to a name. I like that. You didn't think of a name right away because that gives someone another option. That's true. My arm seat's sticking to this paper towel that's wet. I'm gonna move that. Okay. Okay, I think we're getting close on this one. Get some other darks in there. And then some lighter little spots that are going to come around. Try to put my head in there, but I caught myself. <laughs> Excellent save. It's all those times you remind me. Posture, you know? Mm hmm. <laughs> I appreciate it. Keenan being aware to give all of us the best experience. Thanks, Keenan. Well, I, I try. Okay, so this is looking good. We're gonna give this just a second to dry and we'll be right back. Okay, this is looking dry now so we can do our next step, which is not putting the wolf on yet. We're just gonna keep our wolf like there. So don't paste it on yet. And are you laughing? I like, the, not I like the, self, the, the false direction. Okay, the next step is not doing <laughs> this. Okay, another thing that you can learn from my mistakes is I love this Dr. P.H. Martin iridescent calligraphy color, and this is silver. Um, I was like, oh, I'll just pour a little paint on my palette. This pours out really quickly, and I like wasted a bunch of my paint when I did it. So if you want to not be oh, like Jesse, you can just... Not. <laughs> <laughs> follow that rule so I'm just gonna make sure this is like mixed up then I'm just going to use my paint out of the bottle it has this cute little bubble on the top and it's gonna bust that bubble is that bottle plastic or glass it's plastic how squishy is it it's not very squishy so it doesn't like you can't squeeze it out like ketchup or something and it pours out like it's pretty liquidy so that's why I was like whoa I didn't realize how fast it pour mm. out so I just I just used it right off the bottle I guess the only thing you want to be mindful of is making sure you have a clean brush and you're not like trying to put a dirty brush in there and messing up your paint. Other than that, it's great. Okay, so I'm using a number two brush for this. You could use a round eight because it still gets a pretty good point yeah. if you have that. But if you have a number one brush, that's even tinier. It's just, you want a little brush. Whatever you got, it'll work. But I'm gonna use this too. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in there and add a couple of dots in here and there, just a little bit of Magic, maybe I want a line and a dot kind of situation going on. This is just like, there's no 
right or wrong way to do this. Just have fun doing it. This is giving us a little shine, a little shimmer to our, I could probably put a little bit on my palette with my bigger brush. So I don't have to dip in there. Woo, that was a lot on my brush, but that's okay. Got two, I'm holding two brushes at the same time. Now, if you are like doing the art journaling and the watercolor and you're trying to use the brushes I have and not get your watercolor brushes dirty, we will be having this size two brush. I'm using the, the Princeton Heritage, but we'll have it in the select. So if you're trying to keep your brushes separate or whatever, yeah, that'll be available. Got a lot of... I like both the colors of the brushes too. Mm -hmm. Big fan of red, big fan of bl that blue. Oh. Yeah, and the colors help you tell the difference because yes. mixed media stuff can be pretty hard on your watercolor. Okay, I need to get I need to get my head in here really close. So this. What if you bring your head in from the right side? There like you go. Okay, uh -huh. I just want to do a little diamond shape here because I wanted to show them that they can do little shapes. Nice. Do a little diamond in there. Yeah, you have to go for like a thicker spot. So you might not want to try it up there, but just whatever. You can do, oh, let's do a moon. I'm going to do a moon over here. So I think that would be cool. Because, you know, those wolves, they howl at the moon. Oh! Yes, Keenan, thank you for that. Sound of it. I should have let you do it all the way and not interrupt it. So <laughs> no, if you want to do it one more time, just for fun. <laughs> I don't know, the second time is always usually a little more rough. You know, you never know. I'm just going to do a little star or something. It's kind of fun. So you can get pretty small dots with this size 2 brush like that. And I'm going to show you with the round 8. So if you're like, oh, only have a round 8, I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to show you. It's going to be fine. I'm just going to use the tip of our brush. We're just going to put a couple dots in there. I mean, look at that. You can still get small dots, like really tiny ones with this. So never fear. And then the number one, even tinier. So you're gonna, now I'm gonna move this because I just wanted to see where my wolf was gonna be so that I got that moon in a good spot and whatever. Nice. And now we can just kind of go with the flow of our outline and finish this up. We'll go back to our two, so you can see it. And you can get the right kind of marks with these. Just got to work with your brush. I like the idea of some kind of flowy lines, and it really shows up on these dark spots, you know. Yeah, that silver is sweet. Oh, it's just beautiful pigment. Dr. P.H. Martin, they make a great, beautiful product. And you can take your time with these details and really enjoy what you're doing. Or you can just go for it. Whatever you're feeling. There's no wrong way to approach this. Nice. And sometimes I, I get crazy and I probably put too much on there, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Yeah. Maybe I want a couple more dots around that moon just because it's a cute little moon. It's so cute. There go those details again. I know. I can't. I can't not do it. <laughs> but that's the fun thing about journaling is you can kind of play around with these details and come back to it. All right. Okay. So... Feeling good about that. You can move on to the other one. Get a little more paint on my brush. There you go. Same thing. We could probably put... Oh, I'm going to sneak in on the right here. Put a little diamond in here. Just going to clean that up with this other brush. There we go. Was a little heavy handed on that. All right. We've got a diamond. We could do a moon right here. 
You can do other little magical shapes too, it's just whatever you want. I kind of just like the dots, those are fun. And like a couple of lines here and there. Oh, so, so fun. Magical. It's like a wispy hand. <laughs> it's like a little wisp. That's from something. That's from a Disney movie. A wisp. wisp. A wisp. Uh, brave. Yes. Disney. Yes. Just watched that the other day with the girls. It's a good one. It was my idea because I love that movie. The bear is so good, too. The mama bear. We talk about that in when we do the strong bear. Ooh. Oh, okay. Magical. 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 Okay. Let's have fun embellishing it however I want. Oh, I kind of got big, so maybe I'll just make that a bigger dot. Yeah, it's fine. I like that. Yeah, you can always turn your oops into another shape. It's all good. Okay, rinse my brush. Now to the next step. I'm gonna write my inner critic's name down. Yes. I've been thinking about all those things my inner critic says, like you're not a real artist, you're an imposter. You just got lucky. That happens to me a lot. I'm like, I did that. That looks cool. I'm really glad that I did that. And then if I try to do it again, there's like no way. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that again. That was just like a fluke. But it's not. You can do it. So my inner critic's name is Keith. <laughs> so Keith, my wolf, is going to kick you out of there. And I have this extra piece of paper that I'm going to write dispel, critic, dispel your inner critic on. Cover up Keith because he's out of there. Yeah. My wolf, he's going to... He's gonna come over and just chase Keith right out of there. Okay, and this um, extra little piece of paper I just grabbed from um, my other art journal. That is this Strathmore Vision Mixed Media. I love this because it has a little bit of a thicker mixed media paper. It has this perf on it. Preparation. Perf. Preparation. Perf perforation. I don't know. Oh, whatever. It sounded right both times. Um, <laughs> and I just cut a little piece of that. This, this is fun to make background pages, whatever. Practice even more in. Okay. So, feeling good we about that. We have that on our site. Yes, we do. So, you can follow the link for that. I think they put all the supplies in the little notes in our videos. Like, just like if you click like a thing where it shows drop more. drop down, yep. Show more. So, yeah. If you're looking for that stuff, it's right there. Okay. So I'm gonna move my journal over a little bit. I'm actually gonna move this because I feel like it's kind of a busy background. Well, now I'm worried about getting the paper wet. All right, the background dirty. So I'm gonna use this number two brush. You could also use the number one brush. I'm not doing any fancy lettering here. I'm just writing dispel your inner critic. Feel free to do what feels right for you. I really thought to spell had two L's, but it doesn't. It's just one L. You would L. think it does. Because you think spell, like spell, a spell. Spelling, speller, two L's, each of those. But a magical spell, like I'm going to put a spell on you. That too. Put a spell on you. <laughs> if you could just keep singing while I'm concentrating, that would be just great. Just keep singing. Just <laughs> keep singing. It is interesting. I wonder what that word derives from. You know <gasps> oh what? no! I've got to think. Uh oh, what happened? I told you it pours out pretty easily. Got eyes filled a little bit of my thing. Okay, so when you're done painting with that, you're going to want to put the lid on it. I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to clean that up. Luckily, this is just our art background. So it looks more artistic right now. It's really cool. Mm hmm. And this is funny because 
I have a tendency to knock things over and spill stuff all the time. Like sodas, I lose my keys a lot. And that's one of those things that like, just me being a little clumsy and a little <laughs> like this has really bothered me over the years. And I felt bad about it. Like, <laughs> I just knocked that over again, great. Like, nobody else says this. I'm just so clumsy or whatever it is. And I've, I've felt a lot of shame about that in the past. And now I'm just like, whatever, it's fine. We'll just clean it up, it's no big deal. Look at that, it's like it almost never happened. Almost, nice. we're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> so if part of your inner critic says that you're messy and you're always knocking stuff over, then you can tell that inner critic, no thanks. Or your wolf can tell it. Okay, now look at that, it's even shinier. I could just make this whole thing shiny. I'm sure I can clean that off later, but okay. So we're just gonna keep going. We're not worried about that. I would say definitely take the inner critic that tells you that to leave because especially if it's holding you back from doing something else that you enjoy, mm -hmm. get rid of it. Yes. Just ditch it. Yeah, ditch it. Okay, got a little bit of this on my hand. Let's see if I can, get, I might need a little bit more paper towels. I ran out of paper towels. I okay. have a, I have an entire roll of paper towels. Oh, I got some right here. So if you, or someone who's prone to spill stuff, just have more paper towels on hand. <laughs> okay. All right, so next step is we're going to paste our wolf on. I'm gonna bring back my cutting mat for that. And I forgot to get my palette knife out that we love to use for this. Okay, I got my palette knife. I'm ready to put some Yes Paste on here. And just a trick with this Yes Paste, I've said it before, but you wanna keep the outer edge of this clean so you don't glue your lid shut, because that can happen. And I like to use a palette knife to do this, but you can use whatever you got around, like a plastic knife, whatever. What if those kids' plastic Civil War knives would work well? Oh, probably. They're kind of bulky, though. And you can use a brush, too. I kind of use, I liked using a brush for a minute, and then I just liked how I can scrape this around more evenly. Like, I, I like to use the description of putting icing on a cake. I put it on there, and then I just kind of remove the excess because you really just need a thin amount. It's a nice thin layer. And I'm gluing on top of this surface because then if I go to the edge and it comes off, I'm not hurting anything. And so you can use something specific when you're gluing and that's fine. Um, also, it cleans up with water. So if I get this mat sticky and then it dries and I have a little residue on there, just use water and get it right off. And I like to go to the edge because then I know it's gonna stick well for me. So I'm gonna bring this back here where you can see it. Now I had kind of liked my nose right in the black area, but then I kind of liked having this little negative space between his ears. That's lining up nicely. I'm gonna just work that glue from the inside out and get him on there. And there he is, he's cute. All right. Dang, and that looks good. Thank you. Simple little techniques coming together. Okay, same with this. Just gonna put a little bit of this on here. And like I said, you can give your inner critic a name or you can just write some things that you're feeling self-conscious about if you want. Or you can just do this and know, know what those things are for yourself. And there we have it. Nice. Magic wolf, all done. Feeling good about that. I hope you're feeling good about yours too. And if you'd like to share it, you can share it on our Facebook group. We have a private face group, Facebook group. That's it. Yeah, slow down. Um, called Let's Make Art Journals. And it's a really great community there. A lot of sharing, a lot of support, a lot of questions answered um, with all kinds of materials and stuff like that. So you can do that. And if you're feeling brave, you can also share it on um, Instagram. We, you can use the hashtag Let's Make Art Journals. You can tag Let's Go Make Art in it. Um, whatever you feel like sharing. Um, it's kind of fun sharing it outside the group sometimes because then it gives the other people a chance to discover what you're making and what you're doing. And we hope that you are enjoying that. And um, we're so glad that you're here today painting with us. Oh, Keenan's got to stand up. I was going to say, if you share it and tag us, we will become, eventually, we'll become your inner hype man. Oh, yeah. Think of us if it helps you. Yeah. We're there for you. We think yeah. you're awesome. Yeah, we are here to cheer you on. We got yeah. Keenan as an art cheerleader. Ooh, I'm ooh. your art cheerleader. Thanks so much for being here. Have a great day.